your sense of community when you're free rolling through the mountains rolling through the valley rolling through paradise with me hi everyone welcome to the show my guest has been on here before and and not that time he spoke about um getting involved in uh, uh pemf therapy mats which he needed for his health and and how it helped him. And then from then, how he's now since then helped other people to use some and to invest in them. There's a whole long, beautiful story. Then I find out, I think this happened after the interview was over and we were talking and he also does music and songwriting. And today that's what we're going to talk about. Welcome back to the show, Adrian Armstrong. <laughs> Thanks, Nancy. So tell me about your music. <clears throat> well, I've, my dad was a musician. He, he was a fantastic uh, keyboard player. He played the big pipe organ, actually, in the church. Wow. Which I, at my age, when I was younger, I didn't really appreciate yeah. what the, how complex that was, really. And uh, But now, when I think back with uh, multiple keyboards and pedals, and, and he was amazing. Like, people raved about the way he played, right? So um, I never... He wasn't somebody... He taught piano to other people mm -hmm. but unfortunately it wasn't a situation where I felt I could learn piano from him he liked to yell at his students and <laughs> I didn't want that so so I took guitar lessons when I was 12 for about a year and a half and then I wasn't practicing enough so they stopped the lessons but I continued to play throughout my life kind of it comes in waves I'll play for a while and then sometimes I'll put it down depending on what's going on in, in life and and I'll pick it up again. And and uh, quite a few years ago now, I just I just had a creative spurt where I wrote a bunch of songs. So I have two different CDs of original songs. Um, one song on there is somebody else's because I really liked his song. Okay. But uh, then now I I still I still play a lot, but I haven't written any songs lately in the last few years. Right. But it's, it's just always been a theme in my life. My my mom always sang around the house. Um, my sister was three years older than me, and she had a great record collection of Joni Mitchell and Donovan and the Beatles and uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, and a lot of a lot of singer songwriters. So right. that was that was kind of my influence growing up, and and I never really learned to read music. I just play by ear I, I can hear where something's going to go and kind of just play along with it it's kind of interesting because my my son um years ago he took an uh, organ and and um now he does that those well they call it synthesizing music or something yeah whole big long thing and and like you he's always made kept it there in his life somewhere along the line you know he would turn to to music right yeah so, and and also like you, he plays by he had played by ear, but uh, the teacher had told me that um, to to make sure he learns the notes. And and it was hard for him. I don't know if if it would have been hard for you because he he would tell me sometimes, Mom, those notes are wrong, you know, because he heard it differently, right? Because <laughs> he heard it differently, yeah. Yeah. So well, pia piano is kind of laid out in a very simple way. It's very repetitive. Sure. Right? And and where as you move up and down the keyboard, things stay the same guitar is very different because as you move up the neck everything changes right mm -hmm. so it's so I've, I've always wanted to play keyboard and actually last year I bought myself a keyboard I haven't done too much with it yet but I figure at some point I'll, I would love to learn how to play keyboard a bit too and uh, and I've always been a bit of a drummer I've always been a tapper okay. with things so yeah. I have a cajon and then I did buy I bought a set of electronic drums so I can use them in the house but again i haven't haven't used them that much guitar is still kind of my go-to yeah very good yeah uh, now you said you put out you had some cd have some cds and um i yeah. imagine they'd be able to find them in all the usual um music venues like uh spotify and not not really i, I put them all up on uh on reverb nation okay <clears throat> so I, i've linked it just to my my name adrianarmstrong.com Mm -hmm. And it just forwards to that. And and people can just listen to it for free. I've 
I never really wanted to do music as a business. Okay. Um, it's just something that I enjoy doing and it's, it's a gift for me. So I, I give it away. I don't, I don't need people to download, like you could go on there and pay to download the song, but why, when you can just listen to it for free anytime you want, it doesn't matter. Very so nice. you can just go on there and hit play all and it'll just play through all the songs. Right. <clears throat> and for me, it, it was always more, more about the lyric kind of. Okay. So tell me about uh, the, the songs, some of the songs you've written. Um, they were kind of, they kind of came at a time where I was a little introspective mm -hmm. and, and they're kind of uh, life lessons for me, right? Things, reminders for me of, of ways to live. And uh, there's a lot of love songs. There's a lot of um, mindset kind of songs. Um, and, and it is, it, for me, it was always more about the lyric. Right. Um, I, have, I have done some you know, public performances Oh, I was going to ask that. Yeah. yeah I, when I when I first moved to Vancouver, um, I didn't know anybody. There was right around the corner from where I lived, there was a coffee house, Mount Pleasant Coffee House back then. And they would have, once a week, they'd have a kind of an open mic night. Mm -hmm. So I would I would do that. And then uh, just a few years back recently, I, I got involved with a, a wonderful tribe of people in Vancouver that used to do house concerts and put on shows for people so I, I got quite involved there and, and did quite a few house shows I, I like to play where people are actually quiet and listening yeah not like in busy coffee shops where you're just kind of background music and nobody's really paying attention yeah that had no no desire for me to play in those kind of places at, at all I really wanted people to hear the words because that was the most important thing it wasn't just you know the the melody for background music while you're having another conversation yeah for sure. <clears throat> something about music like i don't know what how to even describe what it does for us right well it's again it's it's a frequency mm -hmm. um and and it can calm us and soothe us and mm -hmm. and we res you know we, we resonate we all have songs that we like and you know some people seem to resonate with heavy metal which is not where i resonate right like so i i'm i'm pretty mellow and and my songs are all fairly mellow they're not really high up tempo it's not dance music um it's again it's a it's more of the singer songwriter you know mm -hmm. gordon lightfoot jim crochet kind of kind of music right and and i still like that i'm still attracted to singer songwriters when i hear new music you know and uh just people that are, you know, one guitar and a voice is, is great. Right. Yeah. I was going to, that's another question I was going to ask you to like an, to these times, who do you listen to? Ah, who do I listen to? Um, a lot of the same people, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of, a lot of the old stuff. Um, new kind of thing, funny, I have... There's something about, sorry. Yeah. Like, uh, like uh, I don't I have, uh, that uh, ringing in my ears so at night I have the radio on all the time or my Alexa now and I'm, I always listen to the music I grew up with yeah you know I there's a there's a guy I like on YouTube it's uh I think he was he was on one of those sh shows I don't know if it was America's Got Talent or Age or one of those kind of shows and his band is called Boyce Avenue B-O-Y-C-E Avenue okay and his videos on YouTube are fantastically beautifully filmed and I've watched them over the years as he's improved and, and he obviously makes a lot of money from his YouTube channel, but he, he covers a lot of the type of songs that I like, uh, mm -hmm. modern ones too, you know, I, I like some Adele stuff. I like, uh, right. um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not good on all the names of people. I know this. I know the songs. Like <laughs> yeah. I, I know the old singer songwriters. Yes. The new artists, I'm not as familiar with their names, but I know their music. Right. Uh, you, you know, one of the things that, that happens with me quite often is uh, I, I'll like hearing a performer, but I don't always like to watch their videos. Um, right. Because when they're, some of them, you know, like some of the women, when they're dancing with, with these really strange little skimpy outfits, I'm thinking, why is that enjoyable? I don't know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 
Yeah. But the voice is nice. Yeah. Right. I like I like him because he's got a great voice and it's in my range, so I can sing along with it. Mm. Um, I like I like people I can sing along with. For sure. Uh, well, right. And and I did some singing in in Vancouver. I used to be a member of the Universal Gospel Choir. Oh, as well. wow. And then and I did some solos with them. So I I that kind of that kind of got me comfortable singing more. And that kind of happened before I got into that tribe where I was playing house concerts. I think singing in the choir gave me more confidence to sing publicly. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then I was more comfortable just being solo with my guitar and, and my voice, but it's quite amazing having a, you know, 40, 50 person choir back you up as well. Oh yeah, for sure. This is so I, anybody that's a singer, I recommend that experience right. to, to join a choir that plays some kind of music that you would enjoy singing along with and, and just do that because it, it nice. really freed up my voice. Yeah, very nice. I'm just always amazed. People are so multifaceted, you know, <laughs> like when, you know, when we first did the, your first interview, it was, you know, because of some of the uh, health issues you were having due to an act or a severe accident, right? Um, yeah. So it was more, mainly about that and about Tai Chi. And I mean, the next thing we know, it's like you're, you're also a singer and it's like, and, you know, and a guitar player. And it's like, yes, of course. Why? Why? Like, it shouldn't surprise me. But that does so always surprise me when people have these wonderful other sides to them. Yeah. And, and quite often they're hidden. Right. Yeah, like, yes, exactly. People don't always let that stuff be shown to the world because we're. I don't know we're always trying to measure up to the professional mm. that we hear all the time, you know. So, a yeah. lot of people I think are very insecure, and, and singing is a very vulnerable thing. Uh, you know, like they, they say the number one fear is public speaking, but public singing is a pretty Sing. big one for a lot of people as well, right? Yeah, although yeah. karaoke, I think, kind of change that but you know a lot of time people have to be drunk to do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's why they go there right <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. They want to sing but they need those drinks first <laughs> but it, i think when you look at primitive cultures music is much more a part of their world yeah in a, in a not in a commercial fashion where you're just listening to it on the radio just in yeah. in a way that they they actually play it or they sing it or there's, you know, music in the streets and in different, you know, South American countries you go there or Cuba, there's, there's just music everywhere. Right. You know, not just with the drums. Not, yeah. 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 Very much so. Yeah. I hear yeah. It. And, it, and, it, and drumming again, that's another thing that's very healing. Yeah. Um, the vibration of, of the drums. You know, that and, goes and, right and inside when, you. when you're using your hand, like hand drumming mm. more than like, Stick drumming, you know, hand drumming gives you a real sensory connection with that vibration, right? Right, for sure. Wow. And those and those frequencies and vibrations, again, they're very healing for us. Singing is very healing for people. Being sung too, I, you know, I think a lot of mothers will sing lullabies to their babies to put them to sleep. You know, and my mom did when I when I was a kid. As I said, my mom she sang all the time around the house. Right. Yeah, I sang to my babies, and they didn't care that I couldn't carry a tune. That was no, the thing about them. No, it doesn't matter. It's 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 a form of love expression, right? Yeah. And and, and I th it's a very powerful thing, and it's it's a shame that more people in our culture don't connect with that more and, and sing yeah. more because it 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 really is wonderful. I it's it's interesting, you know. I often think about why our culture is so. Like we don't have a healing ceremony like the First Nations people do. And we don't have a lot of things that other, as you say, all the other cultures do. And we're more um, almost like we want to be alone, sort of, idea, you know, isolated in our own little bubbles. And it really is interesting when you look at it, right? Yeah. Yeah. We, we don't have those uh, transitional phases from, you know, like a lot of cultures do where you go from being a boy to a man or a girl to a woman. And we don't we don't have the same kind of rituals. That, yes, right. And again, those are those are very healing and and happen at, at stages of your life where it's kind of important to have that recognition of yeah of, sure. of the shift in, in your life. It's so it's so fascinating when I think about it, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's what so for, for me, I I like it when, when everything else in my life is 
not needing as much focus, then I can attempt to get back to the music more. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. I think that's great. We we all need something, I think, whatever it is. Yeah. That, that we can return to or, you know. Yeah, some. I mean, some people draw and paint. Like my sister was an amazing artist. Um, not really that musical. Didn't have a great singing voice. She loved music. Mm -hmm. She never played an instrument, though. Um, but she was an amazing artist. And I, I've never been able to draw. And music was just always kind of my thing. Right. But but I remember when I was a kid, music, the way we listen to music now is very different because we used to listen to the same song over and over and over and over and over again. <laughs> yes. And I still know the words. You know, if I hear a song from when I was 15 or 20, or I still know the words to those songs. Very good. But new yes. songs, I, I don't really, uh, you know, people don't tend to have that kind of, I don't know if it's an appreciation for the music or just because maybe today there's so much music. So much different. Yeah, so many other things. So much, there's too much choice, right? right. Um, we we had a certain number of albums. I mean, you had the radio, but mm -hmm. they didn't usually play songs you liked. And if you wanted to record them, you had to get your cassette recorder lined up at the time the song came on. <laughs> you know, but, yeah. but these days there's there's just so much availability of music. And that that's a great thing too, that people can put out their own music, just like like I did. Right. Right. You don't need hundreds of thousands of dollars of recording studio time or you know, you don't need the big equipment. You can do it on your mobile phone and get really great sound quality and even video quality and and put it out there and it's it's except it's as good a quality as we used to get on records absolutely it's like doing this interview you know i'm using a, my my uh, a cam camera that attached to my computer whereas before yeah. i had we had a three camera setup you know or I, right or if you know uh if you look at other shows like uh that are on television like the uh, ellen degeneres or whatever you know you know they have those great big cameras and it's like yeah huge huge setup but <clears throat> that's not necessary again like you said right no. so anybody can walk now start their own which is really yeah. it's freeing in a way it it is and and that was another aspect of my past creativity was that i did photography professionally for 15 years before I did massage and and boy has that changed because back then it was film there's no way you could yeah no way you could film a video in this kind of lighting right back then you would need all kinds of lights and you need uh you need the film camera and and now you can just put your phone out there even in terrible lighting conditions yeah. and get amazing video quality right so Things have definitely changed. It's a different world. It's a different world. It's and in, different in some world. aspects, I think it's really helped. But in others, I think it's yeah. it's taken away some creativity from people as well. Because they're, because there's so much that you can watch. Yeah. I, you don't spend enough time where you're just, I don't know what, what makes you creative or, or those, you know, whether it's boredom or, or whatever it is, but something that makes you get into yourself and into your own creative mm -hmm. flow. Right. And that's different for every person. And, and some people will be visual arts or music or, but it, I think we all, we all should have a creative outlet of some, cause we're, that's what we're here for. We're, we, we're here to create. Yeah. We are, we are creators. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, it could be a simple thing as like, I was just thinking about as kids, we would lay down on the grass and look up at the clouds, you know, and see all yeah, these. Watch the clouds go by. I, I still do that when I yeah. play golf. And imagine. It's all on, yeah. <laughs> when it's slow on the golf course, I'll just lay down. People look at you funny because you're laying on the, on the ground, looking up at the sky. But I remember doing that as a kid and it's great. It's you know, a wonderful it's, feeling. It's a wonderful feeling or the watching the stars at night. You know, yeah. that's what, that's what people did before they had TV and electric lights all night. They'd go watch the stars, have a fire. Yeah. Sit around the fire, tell stories, sing songs, and watch the stars, right? Mm hmm You know, as when I was a kid, too, we, we didn't have a television until I was, I don't know, maybe 10 years old or so. You know, so we did have a radio, but we were outdoors. We were playing, yeah. imagining yeah. made-up games. You know, we would go, uh, when, I, when, when I was much younger in New Brunswick, like, we would climb the trees, and we'd be playing King of the Forest, and all the, these wonderful made-up games, right? Yeah. 
where it's now how everybody's playing their games on their little device and yeah. and and i'm sure i guess it can be creative too but in a totally different way yeah yeah, yeah. well that's interesting to see what they'll be like when they're t when they're older you know all yeah. these new kids with their <laughs> glued to their well I I'm I'm concerned for their health because they're not they're not moving right they're mm -hmm. sitting in a chair and yeah. and you know and and me too I I don't get out and run around as much as I used to you know like it's there's there's it's too easy to just sit back in your comfortable chair and throw something on the screen and 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 watch that and allow their creativity to uh, overtake your own. Yeah. Right? Fortunately for me, I can't sit for long because it hurts. So I'm always walking around my, my apartment. Yeah. <laughs> but I still have the same appetite as when I used to really walk. Anyway, it, it's all, again, you know, it's so fascinating. And I appreciate you taking the time with me to talk about it because I love hearing these things. I love hearing how, you need, you know, you just sort of start doing things just because the interest is there, right? Yeah. Well, that's all very cool. Anyway, thanks again for doing this with me. And um, just thank the audience. I want to thank you for, uh, uh, again, watching the show. And you've been listening to Adrian Armstrong. His his first interview, by the way, is up on YouTube. If you want to go check that out, um, I'm sure he wouldn't mind. <laughs> no. I... What would you, right? <laughs> <laughs> thanks, everybody. And um, I hope you'll watch continue watching the show. And um, if you subscribe, I wouldn't mind that either. Take care, everyone. And peace out. Peace out. A sense of community Till the wax a place to be A sense of community where you're free Rolling through the mountains Rolling through the valley Rolling through paradise with me It's multicultural You're sure to see it all Chilliwax, a place to be, you'll see. Come party in the park, go dancing after dark. Chilliwax, a place to be, you'll see.